of your characters are kind of going through it in the first two episodes of, of the season. What's up for Tommy and what's up for Kanan this season? Well, um, Tommy's character, he goes through, he got a lot going on, right? Because he just It's a big out season for Tom. Angela's, you know, a DA. Exactly, yeah. Kanan just got out of prison. I just found out that Angela was a DA. All of our distributors, our gangs, our, our premieres are about at, to war each other, and we're the buffer between all of that, which may or may not be an advantage for Kanan and whatever plans he has. You know, for me, I, I want everything. I want it all. So now that I'm out, I'm um, just trying to figure out exactly how to achieve that. The first, it was, you know, the aim was to get rid of ghosts without anyone knowing that I'm out of jail. Then I could come and find Tommy and say, yo, so what was going on while I was gone? Mm -hmm. And he would immediately take me as leader. I, mm -hmm. Wait, I didn't have anybody. Now, yes. Perfect. Oh, this worked perfect. out perfect. perfect. It, like, you know, he, it, almost like it was his idea. Right. Like, oh, the, perfect. Perfect. Now you can do this. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. With your character, Tommy, you're, there's a loyalty there, but there's also a huge element of distrust. Um, you know, distrustful of everyone, even your own partner um, at, at some points. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's not until they offer energy that clearly makes him feel like something's fucking going on here that I don't know about. I think he, I think yeah. he gives goes two or three times. Before he starts to do that. To, yeah. to do that. An interesting thing that 50 and I were talking about months ago mm -hmm. was when somebody, if somebody's lied to you, you get that feeling, you know, if you're an aware enough person, you get a feeling, something's not lying to me. And if they come clean, yeah, I, I said fine. that. It's like, you can forgive it. Because but I get past, you get past it, mm -hmm. but when they don't, they continue lying, it gets, you know, You crazy. can either pull up, you know, if you're, you know, okay, now look, now watch yourself on screen, you did this, or you just like, you cut yourself off from them. So I think that Tommy, because he confronts Ghost, at the end of the first yeah. season, mm -hmm. I think that he's showing that I love you. Tell me the truth. I'm catching you in these lies. Tell me the truth. And so we'll see in the second season if Ghost comes clean or where he comes clean or where mm -hmm. the manipulation ends. I mean, it's just life. It's the, it's the way things actually turn out at points. Like the guy that is the real bad guy, mm -hmm. they're gonna find people that find themselves rooting for Kanan because it's a streak of a rebel. And we all have it, and it's just, we all have that thing that we could go against the grain or we would like to. You know, it's the repercussions that they place in front of us every day and the things that we, you know, know would result that stop you from actually going, you know, acting on those feelings. Season two kind of starts out like a, a, a juggernaut, you know, and Ghost is in the eye of this increasingly sort of incredibly difficult storm. Can you tell us a little bit about season two and your process in, in writing it? Sure, absolutely. We actually had a whole other episode one season two premiere planned. And then one day I actually just sat up in bed and I said, oh, this is all wrong. We actually need to start in motion. And what I'll say is the most successful episodes of the show, and we have a, more than a few this season, are ones where Ghost has tons of obstacles. I mean, he's constantly running into obstacles, and we get the pleasure of seeing him think his way through. I mean, as much as Ghost is obviously a man of action, you know, he carries a gun, he can obviously, you know, fight if he has to. I mean, he's got the physique for it, certainly. Um, he's really a thinker. He's really a chess grandmaster at, at his heart, and it's so wonderful for the audience when they get to see him, you know, navigating obstacles. So uh, that's where we really started our focus, is like how do we put Ghost in the worst possible situations so we can see him rise like a phoenix and get out of them. And my next question is about the, the love scenes. They're really um, hot. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what I will tell you is that it's so important to me that the uh, sex scenes in our show come from a female perspective, always. Um, and I always come in and if we have a male director, I have to sort of sit him down and school him about sexuality, it, shooting sexuality in a different way. Not necessarily that they don't have their own experience, I'm not saying that, but, uh, but it is important that um, we tell the sexual story in a way that women relate to and that it's not just about the male gaze or the male um, idea or the male goal. We don't do a sex scene in the show unless it's pushing the story forward. There's no reason to have a sex scene unless it's pushing the story forward. And I take them out all the time of scripts. 
So even though there's, it seems like there's a lot in the show, and there are, they're all there to push our story forward. So in the first season, for example, the intercut sex scene between Greg and Angela and Ghost and Tasha, that's there so that you understand that Angela and Ghost are starting to think about each other. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. Yeah.